Okay. So. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, can you actually can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah, so how do you feel like you've heard undocumented immigration portrayed in media or like what are things you typically hear about undocumented immigrants? I don't know, when I hear about undocumented immigrants in the media or just from people in general, it's like usually pretty negative. Well, when I see them on media, it's like because they caused a problem. I feel like more people are scared about it instead of just like trying to help. I don't know. I hear also like conflicting things, like a lot of times you'll hear that they're lazy, but then also I hear a lot that like they're really hardworking. They come here to work a lot, so uh, the United States provides work opportunity. When we say that word, what do you hear about society? They're stealing our jobs! Oh no, they're not paying our taxes! Stuff like that. I hear people talk about undocumented immigrants in the sense that they are choosing to do an action. Um, that they choose to come to America, they choose to take jobs. Um, <laughs> One of the most prominent political issues in the United States today is undocumented immigration. These student interviews are representative of a familiar narrative circulating in our society and even on our campus. Where is this narrative coming from? This isn't the first time we, as a nation, have dehumanized a people group. The Irish American, portrayed as the epitome of a low-class citizen. The Chinese American, portrayed as a threat to true American culture and identity. The Japanese American, portrayed as a threat to American safety and security. We are all familiar with the message that undocumented immigration and implicitly undocumented people are a problem in need of a solution. This problem encompasses several smaller points of debate which all contribute to our understanding of the immigration issue. The line between popular assumptions and reality is blurry at best. I would say that there is definitely a general perception um, in our country about undocumented people and I think it's based on a lot of negative assumptions. Immigrant labor is different than the domestic labor. They bring a different skill set. So often immigrants who come are either very highly skilled or very low skilled. A lot of US labor is somewhere in the middle, moderately skilled, but very few of us are at the top of the pyramid and very few of us are at the bottom. The result is when immigrants come, they largely complement our talents. They don't substitute for us. And very few people see the huge contributions um, that people are making to our economy. Last year, Mr. Martinez paid about $2,000 towards Social Security and $450 for Medicare through payroll taxes withheld from his wages. Yet unlike most Americans, who will receive some form of a public pension in retirement and will be eligible for Medicare as soon as they turn 65, Mr. Martinez is not entitled to benefits. There are obviously many voices contributing to the immigration conversation. Some attempt to express the reality of the situation, others a misrepresentation of that reality. However, at the heart of the issue lies the experience of countless individuals, each and every one with a different relationship to the label undocumented. These people are a presence in communities throughout the United States. The Whitworth community is no exception. I think it's really possible that um, there are a lot of us at Whitworth that might not even realize that we have undocumented students in our community. For example, I had an advisee several years ago who was an undocumented student, and he got all the way to his junior year as an international business major, and then was told that there couldn't be an exception made or an alternative given for him to fulfill the study abroad component for his major, and he had to change his major three semesters before he graduated. Are we doing the right thing? Are we really um, carrying out social justice in our own campus community when we restrict a student's ability to study the path of a study that they want, the career path that they're interested in? because they have a travel restriction, for example. I definitely think that it's a social justice issue for us on campus to make sure that we're not putting up academic barriers for these students.
These truths we hold to be self-evident. That my grandfather was three-fifths a person until full persons could reach a compromise. Persons. That until they documents become un un are aliens. Persons. I mean, we don't even know when we become them. At conception? At birth? Or when you name them? Or when you simply decide you want to keep them? Persons. Does a person become a person because of other persons? Or is a person a person independent of other persons' perceptions? And silly us. Can a person own property? Can a person be property? Persons.